Good day, beautiful soul family, and welcome back to On Another Level. And I opened up my Bible, and it brought me to 1 Kings chapter 11. And 1 Kings chapter 11, um, I'm going to read but so much. We'll see how far I'll go. I think I'm just going to read all of 1 Kings chapter 11 and go on from there. I hope your day is going well and continue to be blessed and um, build your relationship with God Almighty. Um, I also suggest um, to go within with self-love, self-care, self-nurture. It's important because it's when you turn your energy within and you bring forth um, cleansing, cleansing of your mind, cleansing of your body, to be realigned, you know, to be attuned. And um, it's just so interesting. When I think about being attuned, it's, it's, it's edging out. You see, like the music instruments, it sounds in such a disarray as they are attuning their, <clears throat> their instruments. But when it's all done and it's been attuned, there is a beautiful melody that comes out. And so, I encourage... I do this. I encourage my sons to do this. This is something that I encourage us all to do because we need it. First Kings <clears throat> chapter 11 reads, But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, um, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away from your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had seven hundred wives, princes, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, he <clears throat> as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon died, I mean, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did father, as David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, Chemosh the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of children of Ammon, and likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. I'm going to say that again. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, and that's verse 9, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. 
notwithstanding in thy days. I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it on, out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was the king's seed of Edom. For it came to pass, when David was in, when David was in Edom, and Joab, the, the captain of the host, was gone up to bury the slain. After he had smitten every male in Edom, for six months did Joab remain there with all Israel, until he had cut off every male in Edom. that Hadad fled. He and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him to go into Egypt, Hadad being yet a little child. And they arose out of Midian and came to Paran. And they took men with them out of Paran. And they came to Egypt unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, which gave him an house and appointed him victuals and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him to wife the sister of his own wife, the sister of Taphanes the queen. And the sister of Taphanes bare him um, Genobath his son, whom Taphanes weaned in Pharaoh's house, and Genobath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And then Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the captain of the host, was dead. Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let him depart, that I may go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said unto him, But what hast thou lacked with me, that, behold, thou seekest to go to thine own country? And he answered nothing, Howbeit let me go in any wise. And God stirred him up another adversary, Rezan, the son of Eli Eliada, which fled from his lord Hadadezer, king of Zobah. And he gathered men unto him, and became captain over a band, when David slew them in Zobah. And they went to Damascus, and dwelt therein, and reigned in Damascus. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, beside the mischief of the Hadad did, and he abhorred Israel, and reigned over Syria. And Jeroboam the son of Nebat, Nebat and, and Ephrathite, Ephrathite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name is Zerua, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David his father. And the man Jerob Jerob Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time that Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the um, prophet Ahuzah, the Shilonite, found him in the way. And he had clad himself with new garment, and they too were alone in the field. And a Ahia, Ahijah um, caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel. Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and I will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because that they have forsaken me, have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of Moabites, Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways, to do that which is right in my eyes, and to keep 
statutes and my judgments as did David his father. Howbeit, I will take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince over the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I choose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hands and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes, and unto his son, I will give one tribe, that David, my servant, may have a light alway, always before me in Jerusalem, or always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there, and I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desireth, and shalt be king over Israel. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, that I will be with thee, and build thee a sure house, as I built for David, and I will give Israel unto thee, and I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt unto the death of Solomon, and the rest of the acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. <clears throat> so what's, what's interesting is as I was reading this, the Vice Prayer was recalling different times in which um, a king was disobedient. To Jehovah God. And what happened was that Solomon was under a different spirit. What I was shown was here in um, 1 Samuel chapter 15 <clears throat> here in uh, um, God had told him to he says uh, in verse 1 Samuel said unto Saul the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people over Israel now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the Lord um, thus saith the Lord of hosts I remember that which Amalek did to Israel how he laid wait for him in the way, then he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly, utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant, suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. And Saul so gathered the people together, and numbered them in Talium, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to, sit, came to a city of Amalek and laid way in the valley. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go, depart, get you down from Am, um, among the Am, Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For he showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until they came into Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and the oxen, of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. 
but everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I set up Saul to be king. That is interesting. For he is turned back from following me. Let's say again, that's verse 11. It says, Lord Samuel saying, it says, verse 10 it says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel saying, It repenteth. When you repent, it's like you do something and you have to repent it. You do something bad and you repent. It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments. And repenteth, this means he feels sorrowful. When you repent, you are feeling sorrowful. Um, you're feeling in sorrow. The Vice Spirit is telling me in remorse. Because the thing about it is, is that God Almighty creates us, but we also have will. And so when we understand the love that is given to us, given to us, unconditional, perfect love given to us, and still King Saul decided to do what was considered right in his own eyes. And didn't follow, follow after the explicit instructions that God the Almighty gave. It's just so sad because here in verse 17, And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thy own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Malachites and fight against them until they become consumed. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Samuel said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I have gone in, which, in the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the spoil, sheep, oxen, and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken there the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And then as we see later on, we see how those people that left or were allowed to leave, how they came back and tried to kill the Israelites. And this, this account is found <sighs> and this account is found in Esther um They set up mandates and statues. They were trying to, to come against the Israelites. And because of Queen Esther, 
who truly was in Hebrew. She was able to hearken on to the heart of Xerxes. Okay. And the same thing is happening, or the same thing happened to Solomon. Um, Solomon was told not to be with these strange women, to not go on to them and to not have them go on to you. And he did not pay attention to the instructions of God the Almighty. He had so many wives. He had, what I'm seeing here, when it says that he had, let me find it. Because I thought, you know, the Vice Spirit was telling me something that I thought was very sad, but interesting. It says, and he had seven, as brought in verse 3, chapter, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 3, and he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. What I am seeing there is no control. A king that has no control. You know, it's still like looking at the parents of King Solomon. Sometimes there's still little fragments of toxic energy that ciphers through. What is so interesting is as I was reading this, David humbled himself, kept himself accountable. Yes, there were things that he did, but he kept himself accountable. And he made changes. And that is why God still considered David to be not so much of a king, but a servant. What's so interesting, beautiful soul family, is that we're servants of God the Almighty. And sometimes we can have titles and we look, overlook the fact that we are our first servant because a servant if someone says how can I serve you their priority is what's on the mind of the person that they are serving are they feeling good are they, uh, is, is there any complaints? Is there any confusions? Is there any way in which I can help you? And what's so interesting is that King David, remember that he is a servant. And so because of King David, there was some type of grace that was there, that was showed. But the thing about it is, is that what I see about 700 wives, 300 concubines, and it doesn't even give, it says princess. 
princesses. It's a it's a major infatuation, a major like it's a longing, it's a sexual like because what's so interesting is that these wives you have to say 700 wives was it love did any of it have to do with love because he was very rich did any of it have to do with love the vice spirit is telling me about a meal when you have a good meal and it, it's got the nutrients is all covered, you know, it's got the right seasoning, you know, everything is included within that meal, you don't want another meal. As a matter of fact, you probably can't even finish it. But when you have a meal that is not nourished with vitamins and the good nutrients of the body, okay? You're going to always want more and more and more and more and more. And what I'm seeing is that as he opened himself to these women, these, uh, says, Woman together with the daughter of Pharaoh. The daughter of Pharaoh, she didn't mind sharing. Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. What the Divine Spirit is showing me is that All that his father did, all the battling that his father did, came undone. Because in the end, it showed that there was an adversary. And it talks about how the adversary was raised in the house of Pharaoh. The very people he had opened himself to that his father had warred against and that God Almighty told him to not be amongst. You yourself are, are a person chosen. Do not be of trash. And he chose the gods and the trash. What's so interesting over God? What's so interesting is that hmm, verse 9 it says that which had appeared unto him twice. God appeared unto him twice. And he was so blinded by these women. Serving all these different gods and goddesses. What's so interesting is that God said that because um, he didn't listen, it's like on to uh, witchcraft. I believe that is what brought what was brought out in reference to King Saul. And when you don't listen, it's that in itself is is witchcraft. That of which is detestable. The thing about it is that King Solomon did so much, and it was because of King David and he says my servant David that he didn't just do away with them
But the more that he turned to these women and their gods and goddesses and of that energy and of those spirits, instead of just worshiping the only one true God Almighty, he started worshiping and going after many other gods. And then in the end, it was those people that he opened up to, that his brother, not his brother, but his, his father, King David, had warred against. See, his, his father, during his lifetime, his father did a lot of warring and a lot of trying to clear out the way for his son, King Solomon, so that his son, King Solomon, can be at a time of peace to build the, um, build out Manifest the blueprint. And what's so interesting is that the divine spirit is bringing me back to an earlier point where the Israelites were crossing over the Jordan River and how the Moabites were trying to figure out how they can come against the Israelites because they were, they were so afraid of them. putting spells upon them and it wasn't working. He brought his attention elsewhere. He was not able to govern his people. And as brought up in other videos, it's about the Holy Spirit. It's about God the Almighty. When he's not following after the statutes and the commandments and the instructions and the ways of God the Almighty, that means the, um, the kingdom was ruled not under the Spirit of God, not under the roots of God. But of Satan. The Divine Spirit is telling me that nowadays this is happening. God, the Almighty, <laughs> has shown grace and mercy and they still turn their backs. So I looked at, you know, here it says, here it says, um, verse 5, for Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of Zidonians, and after Milcom, the ab abomination of Ammonites. And I looked that up, and it says, um, Ashtoreth is the queen of heaven to whom the Canaanites burned offerings and poured libations. That's found in Jeremiah 44. Astarte, goddess of war and sexual love, shared so many qualities with her sister, enough that they may originally have been seen as single deity. The thing about it is going back to sexual love, infatuation. This is more than an infatuation. This really is a consumption of flesh. Here says Milcom. That's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Was the name of either the national god or a popular god of the Ammonites. He is attested in the Hebrew Bible and arche archaeological finds from the former territory of Ammon.
The thing about it is, is when understanding the roots of such things, it's really about understanding that he decided to worship Satan. And when we turn our backs from God the Almighty, that's exactly what we're doing. Now mind you, there are things that we choose to do and we choose to hold on to, but we have to look at the roots of it. Here it says abomination. So there was abominable things going on. Sacrifices, children's sacrifices. Not just animal sacrifices, but children's sacrifices. And what is so sad is that the money from King Solomon And the land was pretty much given into the hands of these gods. What the Vice Prayer was telling me, and this is when I was younger, is that um, the Moabites were selling off, they were, they were sending their women to attract the Israelite men and then the Israelite men weren't buying any uh, um, they weren't being attracted to the Hebrew women because they were seen as bland and not only that but the Israelites were they left when they left Egypt they were rich and so they were using they were pretty much handing their money over to the Moabites and any of the nearby countries that that were trying to come against the Israelites by appeasing to their likeness. You know, trying, you know, commons. And the same cycle is happening over and over again. And then the very people that they open themselves to are the very people that have turned against them. Do we not see that this is happening today, beautiful soul family? And so what's so interesting is that God the Almighty here it says in, in verse uh, 13 Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake and for Jerusalem's sake which I have chosen. And so the thing about it is, is that even though all these things are taking place, we have to individually come to the Divine Spirit and say, you know what, I repent. There are things that I need to work on. But you are at the forefront of my mind. Please give me guidance and give me wisdom to where I can always stay right in your eyes. What I see right here, and it's so interesting, is here, it says, show me my sin. King Solomon had turned his back on David, and so he was not seeing. He really wasn't seeing. It's like they had covered his eyes with lust and greed and all that God had given him was going into the hands. of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Zidonians, and the Hittites. Just like back then when they came out of um, Egypt and they had their money and they were crossing over, in the midst of crossing over, they got taken to the, to the women of the Moabites. And anyone, any of those countries trying to allure them so that they can overtake them. Overtake their money. Overtake them in battle. The Divine Spirit is telling me about the word hoodwinked. Even that word hoodwinked has its own history. And how many of us 
have our eyes covered by the very people that one has gone. And so this is why we must turn our backs against the world that has clearly turned their backs against God. How do we do this? We repent. We make disconnections. We fast. Fast in food. Fast in electronics. Fast in certain people, friends and family, you've just got to take them out of your life. And this fasting doesn't mean that it's for a time frame. It's not a diet. It's actually a lifestyle change. And it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't. But the more you try to make sure that it takes place and you're learning more about yourself, God will be able to show you your sin, be able to show you areas that you need to, to eradicate from your life. So you can be in the right standing or in a humble position before God the Almighty. And this is something for all of us to do. And as we see here and wherever we are, just take a look at the world and see countries have been pardoned. States and kingdoms have been pardoned, but they continue to turn their back against God. And it's so interesting because the, they want their statutes and mandates obeyed, but they don't obey the statutes and mandates of God the Almighty. And then you have to say to yourself, did they really ever? See, the hoodwinked is what the Moabites, the um, Ammonites, Edomites, because back then they didn't even want Moses and the Israelites to go through their town. They fought against them. And so here we have King Solomon opening up to these people and their gods and goddesses and their ways, their lifestyles. In a way, it's like you are used to turn your back against not only your people, but also your God. You are used to come against self. And in so many ways, this is taking place. Beautiful soul family, this is about us taking a look at ourselves and asking God, please show me my sin. Please show me what I need to work on so that I can make the necessary changes. Because in the end, it's all about you and what you choose to do in your life. Have a beautiful and wonderful day. Namaste.